Lena Kasparian didn't want her partner, Mark Zatarian, to die. She loved him. But one night they got into an argument and he started physically attacking her. Lena, in desperation, reached for a knife that was in the kitchen sink. She wanted to scare Mark off, protect herself and her two young children. Defiantly, he lunged at her and the knife pierced his chest by 14 millimetres. But as tiny as that was, it was enough to kill him. Tonight, we take you back to that awful evening and its chaotic aftermath to see why, in the eyes of the law, Lena went from a victim to a perpetrator and what she had to do to beat a murder charge. Fourteen millimetres is minuscule, a tiny tip, a mere 1.4 centimetres that will haunt Lena Kasparian for life. The pathologist says it went in about 14 millimetres, which is about that. Mm. A little cut, there was no blood or anything. 14 millimetres, I mean, that's a tiny cut. Impossibly tiny for the damage it caused, the death of her partner, Mark Zatarian. And for Lena, a charge of murder with the prospect of life in jail. In a split second, one life is taken. Another ruined, as Lena is branded a calculated killer. You can stab your partner and then be arrested. You can be free. This is what Australian law is. Tonight, we hear as the horror of May the 1st, 2011 unfolded. First, Lena's call to triple zero. I stabbed him in, in the chest with a knife. OK, you've stabbed him. This is an you, okay. you have stabbed your boyfriend in the chest. Her police interview. I hope he doesn't die. Please, God. I don't want his death on my hands. Please, God. Oh, my God. If he dies, I'll just throw him right in jail. And the little girl who saw it all. And how did you feel when you saw all this? Sad. It was a night no one planned, where no one could imagine the outcome or the ramifications. We're used to seeing women bashed badly, sometimes dying. In this case, it's the man on the floor dying and the woman who's held the knife. In the eyes of the law, Lena is the attacker. But to this former Supreme Court judge, it's not that simple. He now questions why she faced court at all. It was a prosecution case that was essentially hopeless from the start. One, two, three. <laughs> Lena Kasparian is in her element today. Okay. Are you going to be able to get the shot if I... At the photo shoot for her new After Five range, this strong, independent fashion designer right. feels a sense of achievement. Act natural and put on the jacket. But it's taken years oh, you know. and a lot of heartache to get here. Serious. It yeah. does hurt when people say nasty things about you and call you a murderer when you know you're not. And, you know, when someone you love dies and you're blamed for it. To outsiders, Lena and Mark made a happy, loving couple. But in truth, after 10 months together, the relationship was falling apart with Mark drinking too much and taking drugs. He got to a point where I told him, like, he needed to leave because I didn't want my kids to be around that. And, you know, he'd cry and he's like, I have no one else. You're the only one I trust. You're the only one I have. And I felt sorry for him. Was it a volatile relationship? There was a lot of arguments and he'd, you know, yell at me and, and swear at me and... But it doesn't sound like you were submissive either in that relationship. No, I mean, I'd tell him off, why were you drinking today? Why did you, why did you lie to me? You know, you promised you're not going to drink anymore. No one could know it, but Sunday, May the 1st, 2011, would provide the trigger for a random act of violence that would end with the most tragic result. Again, Mark was drunk, and Lena had had enough, so decided to head home from a family party early. I knew he was going to be out of control and he was going to embarrass me and humiliate me. 
What was the drive home like? Horrible. It was just intense. He was out of control. Security footage from a drive through captures the family as they pick up dinner. Lena then heads home, focused on getting her two children inside the house and keeping Mark out. I told Mark to stay outside to cool off. And, you know, he kept yelling and, and hurling abuse and trying to kick the door in and running into the door and making a racket. At that point, did you feel in danger? I was more concerned with the neighbours. I was embarrassed, you know, oh, they're going to hear him now and uh, I better let him in because he's not going to stop. And that's when Lena made the biggest mistake of her life. She opened the door to Mark. It's a decision Lena regrets to this day. I remember the look on his face, it just it wasn't him anymore. And I went into the kitchen to say, you know, are you all right? Like, what's, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you behaving like this? And he slapped me and that's where it all started. Had he ever hit you before? No. He's pushed me around before, but he's never actually physically slapped me like that. So what did you do in response? I was at that point telling him, you know, you need to leave. I can't deal with you anymore. And that's when he picked up the saucepan. It was to be a new level of aggression. As Mark grabbed the saucepan from the sink, Lena's three-year-old son and five-year-old daughter heard the arguing and came running in to their mum. So tell me what Mark did with the saucepan. <sighs> Striking me over my head. In full force. And I, I remember just trying to block him and at the same time push my son away. And my, my ears started ringing, so it sort of, the sound sort of just went. This crime scene photo of the damaged and misshapen saucepan shows just how ferociously Mark attacked her. I'll never forget my kids screaming. You know, having my son wrapped around my leg, screaming and crying, and my daughter trying to protect me. Kicking Mark from behind, telling her, him, leave my mummy alone. Coming up. I just held it up to my chest and I said, stay away from me. Pushed to the brink. Was he aware of the knife, do you think? Yeah, he kept saying, all right, stab me, do it, go on, stab me. When self-defence is no excuse. I was like, oh my God, what just happened? And I saw the tip of the knife had a little bit of blood on it. And I was like, okay, I need to call an ambulance. That's next on 60 Minutes. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.